<laughs> because my visa expired at some point. I just did it cry. Hey, I for shit for pants. <laughs> Hi guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here welcome if you're an og subscriber you know i one my name is glory g to the l to the o r y let's get it so for today's video as you can see by the title already i'm going to be talking about the graduate root visa okay so before i go ahead with the video i'm just going to give a disclaimer that i'm not an immigration officer or an immigration expert so i'm just basically giving details about the visa and kind of my experience you know while applying for the visa um that being said i'm going to leave a link to the uk government website in my description box just in case anyone wants to look at it and get more information also at the end of this video i'm going to give a backstory of how my tier 4 visa actually expired before my graduate room visa came out bro the fear that catch me eh? <laughs> in fact let's not get to that yet let me talk about the visa first and then we'll get to that at the end of the video <laughs> If you're watching this and you don't already know what a graduate room visa is it's basically a post-study work visa that allows you to stay in the uk to work or look for work for two years um after your degree so two years if you did a bachelor's and a master's and three years if you did phd that's in a nutshell that's basically what um the visa is about right so let's start with eligibility so to be eligible for the visa you have to currently be in the uk you cannot apply from your home country you can't say oh i'm already in nigeria let me just apply for it um here nope you have to come back to the uk and apply for it from the uk um secondly you have to currently be on a tier 4 student visa so you can't apply for the graduate route visa if you're not currently on a tier 4 student visa thirdly you have to have completed a uk bachelor's degree or a postgraduate degree or other eligible um courses then finally your uni has to report to the home office that you have successfully completed your course so basically you have to constantly be communicating with your uni so they can give you a go ahead to apply in terms of when to apply you can apply once your uni gives you the go ahead to apply so you definitely don't have to wait till you've done your graduation um to apply so once your uni says it's okay to apply go right ahead but on the flip side one thing that i found out is that your <laughs> your visa starts counting from when it's been approved not when your current visa expires let me say that again so say for example your current tier 4 visa expires i don't know sometime in march but you applied for your graduate route visa last week and it came out today your visa will start counting from today not from march when your current tier 4 visa expires hopefully that makes sense so all that time between when your graduate visa came out and when your current tier 4 visa expires is basically wasted so that's definitely one thing to keep in mind when you're applying for your visa so moving on to the documents needed for this application not a lot of documents needed for this application to be honest basically what you need is a valid form of id which could be your passport um your brp card which is basically your tier 4 student visa and your cast number CAS stands for Confirmation of Acceptance for Studies and this will be provided by your uni. Thankfully for this visa, I feel like they try to make it as stress-free as possible. So there's no need to show any bank statement or proof of funds or or have to keep money in your account for so so amount of days and show it all, all that was just scrapped. Like you don't even sound how happy I was at this scrap that because all that having to wait for the money to stay how many days in your account was just long. Now for the main the main thing, the cost of the application. This visa not gonna lie yeah, it's kind of expensive the total um that i paid was 1948 pounds basically 2000 pounds so yeah that's let me do a bit of breakdown for you so the application fee in itself is 700 pounds then you have to pay another fee called the ihs fee ihs basically stands for immigration health surcharge and that one is 624 pounds a year so if you're applying for two years, you do £624 times two plus 700 And if you're applying for three years, you do 624 times three plus 700 So that's how you get your total. But since I applied for two years, I paid a total of £1,948. Next thing I'm going to talk about is how to apply. So you go on the UK government website, which I will leave in my description box below, and click on the apply now button. And then you create an account and basically fill in the application form. To be honest, when I was filling the form, I felt like the application form was quite straightforward and self-explanatory so it didn't take me that long to fill the form then after that you make the necessary payments and move on to brp verification to verify your brp you will need to download an app called uk immigration id check
check the app is basically for you to use and scan your brp card for them to check it and verify it although for me this wasn't the case because at the time i didn't have my brp card with me because i had sent it off to dvla to use as a form of id so i had to actually book an appointment and go in person to do my brp verification and all that and unfortunately this cost me more this is the part that upset me so much the fact that i had to spend extra money as far after spending a thousand and half nine hundred and something but yeah unfortunately that was what happened with mine so i booked an appointment with a company called Superasteria. hopefully i'm saying that correctly i'm going to put the company logo here they are an official partner of the uk visa and immigration and the appointment that i booked with them cost me 112 pounds i believe just to book appointment to go and capture biometrics that's what cost me 112 pounds i kid you not so i went there um they captured my fingerprints i they took passport photograph scanned my passport and brp and that was it so moving on to getting a decision the uk government usually advises that it would take up to eight weeks to get a decision so that means it could come out in a week it could come out in two weeks three weeks four weeks like that but they advise us to wait for at least eight weeks to get a decision back from them um it's a weird one because like mine came out in like two weeks two weeks give or take two weeks after i had finished panicking anyway i'll give you a backstory like i said um <laughs> so yeah mine came out in two weeks but i have a friend that he's came out in a day literally less than 24 hours so he applied yesterday and he came out today which was so weird and then i have another friend that his own came out in like what a month so it's just there's no way to get the exact number of days it will take you just have to apply and wait for them to get back to you okay so what you can or cannot do on the visa i feel like you can pretty much do anything if i'm being honest so you can work in most jobs you can just stay in the uk while you're looking for a job and not have to worry about visa or anything um you can do voluntary work you can travel abroad and come back so for example during like summer holiday and you want to go back to your home country say i travel to nigeria and come back you can do that on the visa and you can be self-employed so if you want to start your own business you can start your own business on the visa but there are also things that you cannot do so you can't work as a sports person you cannot play football you can't play basketball on the visa or, or you in fact you can't do any sports on the visa and also you cannot apply for benefits or public funds so you're not entitled to getting state funds or anything of that sort so yeah those are the um only two things that you cannot do on the visa so backstory I don't know who sent me this kind of work, but I went to apply for my provisional license. And when I was applying, they did mention that it would take a while for the license to come back and for my um, ID that I submitted to them to come back. But in my head, I wasn't thinking it was going to take like months or even more than a month. I thought maybe like three weeks and they would send it back to me. That's how I applied for this provisional license. So as I applied, they asked for a form of ID. So I sent my BRP card as a form of ID to them because they asked for original. So I couldn't like photocopy it. I was waiting one week, two weeks, three weeks, a month. My BRP card was not coming back. It was not getting to the time when my visa was expiring. I was like, Jesus Christ, who sent me this kind of work? What will I do? So I kept on trying to contact DVLA to explain to them. I, they, nobody was giving me any concrete answer as to what i can do because my visa was expiring i'm like so what am i supposed to do i'm a fear catch me i had to go and email my school i said this is what's happening i've submitted my this thing to dvld i'm not getting it back my visa is about to expire i i can't apply for the visa if i don't have my brp card to scan it i don't remember when i was talking about um scanning your brp card to do brp verification um, I just at some point I just said crying. I say, hey, hey no, man, bond me back to Nigeria, put me that bulletin bag. <laughs> I'm bonding me back to Nigeria because my visa expired and I cannot apply for new visa because I went to go and apply for driver's license. She be like, I'll be driving in Nigeria. So I contacted my school and they go back to me. My, my international student advisor said, it's okay, I should just apply for the visa. That once I've applied for the visa and paid for it, whether or not it comes before my current one expires, is fine. So I can still be in the UK while I wait for them to give me a decision on my visa, even though my current one expires. It's absolutely fine. Omo, hey. I have a shit for pants. Serious? <laughs> Serious shit like this, eh? I was just thinking like, what 
can I possibly do? That was the reason why I had to go and do my BRP verification in person because I just submitted my application and I didn't do any BRP verification. And they cannot process your application if they don't have the documents. So I was just like, you know what, let me just submit this one first and know that I've sent this one off. So luckily, after I submitted my application, a couple of days later, DVL sent my, my BRP card back to me and I was like, I have never been so happy in my life. I said, thank you, Jesus. So immediately I carried my BRP passports, everything, went to the Superstaria office. They captured everything and sent it to the home office. And I was just like, finally, at least now I can calm down. So yeah, I feel like mine would have come out sooner if I submitted my documents at the point of application. But yeah, two weeks is not bad, if I'm being honest. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it was at least insightful because that's kind of what I was going for. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.